Hello, Bill and Jordan here, and in this short video, we're going to talk a little bit about the math and logic behind computer science. Studying computer science could seem pretty daunting if you're just a noob. We both know that from personal experience, as we're both econ majors who are trying out CS for the very first time. However, as one to have taught us, learning CS really should be a fun and educational process. It all comes down to your attitude and approach. And today, we're going to be using math as a stepping stone for coding. Think of math as the foundation that you're currently sitting comfortably on. And imagine computer science being a hot air balloon. The two are closely tied together. And if you were to embrace CS, it's capable of elevating you to the next level. Now, let's try working with Python for just a bit of a minute. No, not that one. Let's start with the simplest of the mathematical operations, addition. If I were to ask you what's 14 plus 28, you'd shout out 42 without a second of hesitation, and you'd be correct. We can pretty much do the same thing in Python simply by printing out 14 plus 28, and that should give us the same answer. Alternatively, we could write the function that adds any two variables and returns the result. Then we can replace the variables with much larger numbers and still get the answer in less than a blink of an eye. But that's not that impressive, is it? Even a toddler knows how to add two three-digit natural numbers together. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. Now, what is 42 factorial? Okay, I know that if you Google it, you'll get it right away, but let's not do that here, shall we? We can write 42 factorial as 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 42. The keen observer that you are it shouldn't take too long to realize that 42 factorial is actually 42 times 41 factorial, and that in turn, it's 41 times 40 factorial. In fact, the factorial of any natural number can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial, and you can go all the way down to 0, where 0 factorial is intuitively 1. Now let's try writing the function that gives us the factorial of any natural number n. If n is at its lowest possible value of 0, we will simply return 0 factorial, which is 1. However, if n is larger than 0, we will simply continue returning n times n minus 1 factorial until we get to our base case of n equals to 0. Now that you have this weapon at your disposal, you no longer have to type out each number on Python. You can simply replace the variable n with a number whose factorial you want to calculate, and then run it. Psych! Your poor little laptop can't handle a calculation this large. Even Python has its limits, but if you were to try a smaller number, like 100, you'd be golden. Now, let's travel back in time and visit Alan Turing, the father of modern computer science. In the 40s, Turing was one of the people tasked with the impossible mission of decoding the Nazi Enigma machine, a mission that he ended up completing and thereby prevented the deaths of many millions more. The Enigma machine is intricately designed. When you input a letter, for example, T, it will go through the plug board and spit out a different letter, let's say A. It will then pass by three rotors that scrambles it three times until it produces a different output of C, and then C will go through another plug board and spit out D here. Like Hugh Alexander said in the movie, this roughly generates 159 million 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 different settings. Now, Turing used two key logics to begin solving the enigma. The first being that no letter can be mapped to itself. The other being that we know some words will appear in certain messages. Take the word Wetterbericht, for example, German for weather report. Let's say I know the word dog is somewhere in the message D, K, L, Y, G. And then because D and G cannot be mapped to themselves, we know that D becomes K, O becomes L, and then G becomes Y. Turing then tried out different settings on the bomb E machine. For example, he might try a setting where D is connected to A on the plug board. He would then run this through a rotor setting and then generate, let's say, P. Since the end result is K, we know that P and K are also connected on the plug board. Of course, we might run into contradictions while trying out a setting. Maybe we found out that K is also mapped to L. In which case, we are going to have to eliminate the settings we tried out, and then test out another one. Turing continued to improve by me until he was able to decode the setting every day within 20 minutes 
in short, one of the most brilliant minds in human history, uses his logical thinking and ingenuity to solve an impossible problem and saving all our asses in the process. And that's our video. We thank you very, very much for watching it. We had lots of fun making it. Great success.